First grade. One day my mother took my sister Janet and me to Holy Ghost School in Bel Air, Texas, which is in southwest Houston. We went there to register me at that school. Janet was two years younger than me, so she was just beginning kindergarten. I heard the name Holy Ghost School and I thought, are they talking about Casper? Unfortunately, they were not. We went there and sat down in the office with some administrator to discuss me going to school there. Then a few days later, my time at that school began. It seemed to me to be an exciting thing. The first day of first grade was a big, noisy, and bright awakening to reality. I sat in my chair slash desk in the middle of the classroom. I looked around and saw other identical desks and other kids around me. Lots of parents had come in with their kids and were busily and happily helping their kids into desks. Our desks were small, of course, and all one piece, old-fashioned. A wooden-backed metal-framed chair attached to a wooden and metal desk. There was a groove cut out of the desk near the top for pencils and pens. They were standard, typical desks from the 60s held over due to durable design and budget limitations, but they were an important part of our lives. We were attached to them, it seemed, for several hours a day. My first teacher at Holy Ghost was Mrs. Leland. She wasn't a nun, and she actually defined for me what a lay teacher should be like. She was very nice. I don't remember her ever being angry, or if she even could get angry. I really liked her teaching style, relaxed and friendly. At Holy Ghost there were eight grades at the time, and each grade was divided into two classes. Each class consisted of around 30 students. This was back before teachers figured out that smaller class size meant a better education in general for the class. So the teachers at Holy Ghost were of only two basic kinds in that respect. Either friendly, gaining our respect that way, or vicious, gaining our fear that way. But even the friendly teachers had to be strong. Over the next few years, our class was to become legendary for its misbehavior. I'm now happy to say that I was a member of that rebellious class, the graduating class of 1983. Mrs. Leland was nice, but her altar in that grade, the other class teacher, was Sister Mary. As nice and friendly as Mrs. Leland was, that's how angry and negative Sister Mary was. She was a small presence, physically, around five feet tall, and frail. She seemed ancient to me as well. The only other really old people I knew personally were my great-grandparents, whom I loved very much. I knew there was good in most old people, but Sister Mary really challenged that notion. She was the stern and almost abusive opposite of Mrs. Leland. But both teachers ran first grade efficiently. Another peculiar thing about Holy Ghost's grade system was that since it was a small school, it was almost the same 60 students per grade moving up together through the grades over the years and this made for a very narrow social experience there. Most of the kids in that school had started out in first grade and would eventually make all the grades. Only a small percentage of students in the upper grades didn't start out all the way in first grade. We had very few changes to the list of students in each grade as they all cycled through. So we didn't get to meet many other students outside of the core of what we started with all together in the first grade. I figured out later that this was a bad idea. It gave us the social experience that cult members get. Very little social experience at all. Very little opportunity to make more than a few friends in a few years. Another thing I noticed right off the bat about this school, because I was very observant and inquisitive, was that there were basically three kinds of students at Holy Ghost. There was the one half, Hispanic students. Then there was most of the other half, white Irish students. Then there was the smallest group, non Irish white students, and I was one of those. It's an odd setup since just being white didn't put us white students into any majority. You had to be Irish too, and while it wasn't ever said, there was definitely an Irish clique situation with the students and the teachers as well. The larger ethnicity issue came with what was totally lacking at Holy Ghost. For the eight years I attended that school, our grade had no more than five black students. That's throughout our entire eight-year cycle. We never had any Middle Eastern students and almost no Asian students. The culture of that school was shaped by Irish and Hispanic culture only. I never got to personally know a single black person until after I graduated from that school. This would prove to be very unfortunate for me later on. 
We ate lunch in the lunchroom, which was the same building as the gym. Our gymnasium building was across Chetwood Drive from our school. It was a seldom driven street and a small one, so the students crossed that street at least five times a day. The gym was a huge building by comparison, as large as our church. Two big white double doors were centered in the front face of the building, and they were very heavy doors, just like at the entrance to the church. As we walked into the gym building, we would be herded left into the lunchroom. We waited in line everywhere, and this was no exception. We waited and waited and waited, and then finally we made our way to the counter with the food. <laughs> Holy Ghost tried to save money by having the mothers of students come in and volunteer to serve us lunch. They also cooked lunch. Unfortunately, they were much better at serving it than cooking it. We had hamburgers wrapped in plain white paper wrappers. They were really greasy french fries also. We had milk and chocolate milk and hand-sized cartons. Those milk cartons made great cup balls. We'd sneak out during recess after lunch and crush them down flat, and we'd use them like a baseball in a baseball game. As I grew up more, we developed lots of uses for used milk cartons, but not having game-playing equipment like bats and balls during recesses inspired the cup ball. I remember that the smell of the lunchroom was unique, and I had been to plenty of restaurants with my family. I had never smelled anything quite like that lunchroom. I still haven't. The aroma of cheap patty meat and mayonnaise filled the air and combined with the smell of dirty socks and the gym. Basketballs and trophies and the wood stage and the gym all seemed to put off their own contributions to the overall smell of the place as well. We enjoyed seeing our own mothers during lunch and what we weren't eating didn't bother us at the time. But as the years wore on, we began to get tired of both our mothers being right there in the lunchroom when we were trying to misbehave <laughs> and the lousy food as well. Eventually, the mothers were replaced with employees, all Hispanic. We noticed the change, but only halfway understood the improvement. We were very busy being concerned about other people and places in the school. The lunchroom was multi-purpose in design, in that it was sectioned off by hard curtain-like collapsing walls. They could have three events in the same lunchroom at the same time by simply closing one of the wall sections in between the events. They could have three different sections of room or two, or just one. So they used the lunchroom all the time, and only once a day for food. Many memorable things occurred for me in that gym building. Sometime in the early part of the first semester of first grade, I got in trouble for something. My infraction that day is a blur now, and I believe it's because of the punishment I got for it. The only kid I talked to early on in first grade was Jimmy Berkman, who was highly rambunctious and overactive. He misbehaved with the ease of a chimp. So one day he and I got in trouble together, and I guess it was pretty bad what he did, what we did, because we got sent to the principal's office. It must have been Sister Mary who sent us because Mrs. Leland would never do this. Jimmy and I walked together to the principal's office, or as we would call it during my eight years there, the office. We walked along the science, art, and liturgy rooms. It was a long walk for a little kid, and it was outdoors, on one side of the quadrangle the school was built around. That was a long walk, knowing we were in trouble. When we got to the office area, we were told to wait in the principal's office. I had not gotten to know that principal yet, being new, and I didn't really know what to expect as a punishment. Remember, I was brand new to that school. In the first few weeks of the first grade, I was six years old. We waited and waited and waited in the principal's office for what seemed like hours. We were scared, really scared. We only knew that our principal was a nun, Sister Schroeder, and that she also seemed ancient. Finally, the door opened and in walked Sister Schroeder. She never asked for an explanation from us, and by then we were so scared we probably wouldn't have been able to recall it for her anyway. We walked into her small office, and she closed the door, and then she said, turn around and bend over. So we did. Then I felt this pounding on my butt. 